One second, I just got super my for a second. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, this thing has already texted me, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, I just got I just got really mind. You don't think okay, most people explain. code that as a sexual innuendo? The only real love is conditional. I feel that way. I do feel that way. Yeah. Is it like it's not really about me if it's not dependent on my actions? Yeah, I think all love is like that. Even people that say unconditional love. Like even when people say there's an unconditional love between a mother and a son, well, it's literally yeah. conditioned on her being on the, the being mother. Yeah. yeah, Jesus, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't think like, like, I don't think there is such a thing as unconditional love that mm -hmm. can be applied to only one person. Like if you're going to unconditionally love someone, you must unconditionally love everybody. Yeah. So that well, so then, so now reconcile that with what you said earlier, where people would want an unconditional love machine. Good. I'm about to hose you down. All right, what are we talking about? Tell us. Okay. Give us a soft intro for okay. whatever the f this, this is. is yeah. So this is. I'm going to be experiencing this mostly for the first time. Also, okay. can you, can you go to like Ayla.ai? Okay. I know that you would have thought of this in advance, but just double check it. There's no like porn that's gonna pop up or anything, right? The, I don't. No, no, there should, they, I don't think so. That wasn't the right answer, but okay. Ayla.ai. <laughs> okay. Texture, um, AI girlfriend. Oh, I'm excited. Oh boy. All right. Yeah. So if you wanted a girlfriend, I know you're very lonely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. So you're supposed to, so I think if you text it, uh, it's, it's wow. I feel very self-conscious right now. It's not you though. It, well, it was it was trained on me. Was it trained on like your personal texting did, data sets or? Uh, yeah, it's trained on my Twitter and personal texting. Wow. Yeah, um, I did try asking it the dog works question and <laughs> and she uh, she was way too polite, I think. Okay, let me. So uh, is it okay if I text my other screen? I don't really want people spamming my Google Voice number. Is that okay? Um. Uh, sure. It's okay. so like we can make a random one if that helps, but. Okay. Messages. Send new message. I think if you ask it, you can. It, so it also, so she, she'll talk to you with her voice, which sounds like me, which is horrifying. But nice. It's nice. I'm supposed to be saying good. I'm sorry. The team is going to be watching this and being like, Ayla, and like shaking their heads, putting their heads in their palms. They're like, you're a PR disaster. Uh, but she sounds like me, um, which to me Hold on. is I just, my but name to just you got, it might be nice. One second. I just got super mind for a second. Hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. This thing has already texted me, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I just got, I just got really mind fucked because I opened my thing and this is what I see. And I'm like, is this a picture of you? Have I seen this before? I just got really, and then I'm like, have I used your pictures to catfish? What the f is this showing up in my thing? Okay, sorry. All right, okay. So we've already texted. Okay, I'm sorry. I just typed what twice. Okay, I just got really confused. Okay, what's your name, by the way? My name is Steven. Okay, is she supposed to text me back? I think so. I think she takes a bit because she has to think about it because she's not very, uh, sometimes she's mentally more on it than other times, which is very similar to the way that my brain is to be fair. Okay. Um. <coughs> I think. What? Sorry, I'm, my entire body is <laughs> on fire right now. That's good, I'm glad. Interesting the things we get nervous about and don't get nervous about. It's just it's just weird because it's like it's like a facsimile of me, so I feel like weirdly responsible for what she says. Okay, well she hasn't and responded like to me that yet. She's so like dumb shit. To your... Okay, that's cool. Have you considered making a, an AI boyfriend? No, not yet. I feel like you, it would be very successful. I'll think about it for my only for my tier one subs or above maybe. Oh, I didn't get that. What's your name? Oh, maybe because I said what? I f***ed it up a little bit. Okay. Oh. Do you really text? You don't use, like, proper pronunciation? Oh, you don't. Or, like, a capitalization and stuff? Okay. No, I don't. I, I used... When I was a teenager, I was very anal about it. And at this point, I hit the U button for Y-O-U. And I text L-O-L. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you do, it like, sorry, S-R-R-Y. It's just one more letter. Jesus. Okay. Well, that one, I feel like I'd say S-O-R-R-Y. I'll have to 
<laughs> fix her. Oh, no, I was looking at our actual messages. You typed that actual oh, thing, yeah. I did? Okay. I thought you said the AI did it, then I was like, there's no way that's real. Okay. Oh, yeah, I, I, my, I did text you if you just sent me a screenshot. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to, like, say out loud so that the chat knows what I'm, how much I should cater to them, but. What do you mean by that? Like, you just sent me a DM with a screenshot of the, what you got, which mm. was the me, the AI me sending you a uh, rather flirty photo. Yeah, it was, what's your name, by the way? And then it's you doing a hip kind of, I can't do it. <laughs> Yeah. Can you give us a sample of what the picture looks like? Uh, I'm not wearing uh -huh. anything under down below, so no. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> it's a very friendly, provocative picture. Okay, we'll say that. Yeah. Okay. Lots of belly in this picture, but very little cleavage. You know, so. I'm very well optimized to know how to select the kinds of photos that make men interested. Oh, uh, somebody else while. texted this one. There you go. This is what I got texted basically. I wonder, I, also there might be, oh, how's your day going? What should I tell it? I usually, if I'm talking to like these AI bots, I just try to f them as quickly as possible. So should I be more polite to this one? I don't know. I don't know if she's gonna f you. Wait, what do you mean you don't know? As in like, she does, she's not programmed for it or you don't think I could convince it to? I don't, I don't know. To which one? I don't know. Either of them. Um, well, obviously I, I could I convince it. <laughs> it's just a robot, okay? <laughs> Yeah, but it's like a robot trained on me, and I, honestly, I'm not sure if you're into what she's into. My day is going great. I just got back from an orgy where me and a bunch of other statisticians um, from the <laughs> rationalist community engaged in a ton of CNC play. How is your day going? <laughs> I can't figure this out. Okay, I know enough about you. All right, Jesus. Are you just pretending to be me? Like, no, I'm doing the guy thing of I am reflective and mirroring your interests back at your robot, so okay. that she'll be more attractive. Okay. To oh, me. I okay. see. Yeah. And then she's gonna be like, "Wow!" Yeah, she'll be no, like, she, "Oh my like, god, an orgy with I, rationalists and statisticians <laughs> in CNC." Oh my god, it's like every buzzword is lighting up in my fucking brain. You know? Is this is this how you like seduce women? You just go like find one and then you just say all the buzzwords to them. Don't worry about it. If I tell you the plan, okay, if I pull the curtain back and you yeah. see the wizard behind the Wizard of Oz, he's not a that's giant not, green That's person. not true because I, the time, I think I told you this, when I learned pickup artistry for a while in my early 20s, and then I would, like, guys would use pickup artistry on me, and I would be like, this is what you're doing, but then I would go sleep with them anyway because it worked. Oh, okay. It's like if a woman walks up to you and she's like, puts her boobs in your face, and she's like, look, I'm putting my boobs in your face, you'd be like, this changes nothing about making me want to sleep with you, you know? I don't know. I think it depends. Really? I think that there are, <coughs> if a girl is trying to like, if a girl is up front, if she's like, hey, do you want to fuck? I'd be like, yeah, sure. But if I feel like a girl is like playing weird mind games, I think it would depend on the type of mind game. There are some, there, there are some games that work really well. And then there are some games that turn me off. It's like if a woman comes up for instance, if she starts like trashing Melina, I'm gonna be like, this is retarded. Or if she says things to me that like I know aren't true. Like if a woman comes up and she's like, I really love that you're 5'8 because I don't like guys that are over 6'8. I'm like, why are you fucking, if you wanna fuck me, just say it. You don't have to say random stupid shit, right? Um, but if a girl comes up to me and she's like, I like your YouTube videos, we should like watch them while I ride you reverse cowgirl on the couch. I'm like, okay, that's cute, sure, whatever. It just depends on like, depends on the approach, I guess. There are certain things that'll be like, why are you obviously lying to me? Like if you wanna fuck, just say it. But then there are other things like, oh, I see what you're doing, it's kinda cute, whatever, you know? Yeah, it would just depend. Okay, but if she just like explained to you, if she just explicitly said, like, like I'm now twirling my hair, uh, I, I, I like just pulled my shirt down so you can see my cleavage. Like if she just like narrated to you all the things that she was doing to try to make you interested. I feel like on one level it would be unattractive, but I feel like the meta level of her actually being autistic enough to narrate it to me would be attractive. So I don't know where yeah. that's at there. Like if somebody was actually I, weird enough to say that, I feel like that would be endearing. Yeah, I think it kind of horseshoes around at some point. Possibly, yeah, and it's impossible to tell where does the meta start and the or end and the normal, who knows, you know? I'm waiting for Ayla to respond back to me. I think she's probably soaking wet right now. She might have already come twice and now she's like working on texting <laughs> me back, all right? So I'm just not sure that she's that easy. I like, despite despite the whole, despite the way that I may come across, 
I have to construct elaborate orgies in order to get laid, okay? What is the, that is not true. Don't trigger the f*** out of me, okay? You can absolutely get laid anytime at any millisecond you want. I guarantee okay. you, you could go outside and find five people to f*** in two minutes, okay? I, sh I should have added a clause, which is, people it is not hard. Fuck. Yeah, uh, to have sex that I would enjoy. Okay, oh my god, hold on. Oh, one second, I got a two second audio clip back. Hold on. Oh no. One second. Steven, nice to meet you. What's up? She said, hi, Steven. Nice to meet you. What's up? I was not, that was not a very That's, impressive yeah. response to my, I'm up smiley face. <laughs> Does that work? Does she pick up on sexual innuendos? Uh, did you say I'm up smiley face? Is that supposed to be a sexual innuendo? Yeah, like my dick is up, like I have an erection. Wait, is that what that means? That's not what that means. I feel like 99% of girls would pick up on that, yeah. Okay, how about my dick Wait, is up? I'm gonna there do a Twitter go. poll. Wait, I don't if think you're If you message right. a okay. guy and you go, hey, are you up? And then the guy responds, I'm up, smiley face. You don't think okay, most people code that as a sexual innuendo? No, I'm going to tweet this. We're going to see. I'm going to predict that 30% or fewer of people are going to agree. If the smiley face is essential, there has to be the smiley. With the, it, <sighs> hold on, hold on. It's got to be this one. Hold on. I'm up. And then it's got to be with the, this one. You don't think people would code that as sexual with the nose smiley face? The nose Wait, is essential. The nose? It ha yeah, I sent is you the DM. It has to be the nose okay. smiley face. He's obviously talking about a boner. Okay, I'm writing the tweet. Make sure you have the nose. Don't, your, your fucking chat's gonna come in and, and bias the answers No, because your... my chat all thinks I'm way too much of a coomer, so they disagree with me on a lot. I think What's personally, because the, the last coomer, I am a nymphomaniac, okay? The last time we uh, got into a discussion about like drinking, in my mind, if a girl ever asks me, there are certain things that if a girl says, I'm just like, she wants to fuck. If a girl says like, hey, do you want to go out for drinks later? In my mind, that's like, we're fucking unless I fuck up or something, right? But my chat says that like, sometimes people can just go out for drinks. That's not true. So we disagree on a lot of things like that, basically. Yeah. Well, it's not true. I ask people for drinks all the time and I use it as a test to see if I want to fuck them. That, and often yeah. they fail. A test that I want to fuck them means that they're in until they fuck up. So you just inadvertently. No. Yes. <laughs> that's not, that's when you not say, how lady brains work. It absolutely is. It, it's there until it's not. What do you mean? If you're considering fucking somebody by going out to drinks, that means the answer is yes until they say something stupid and fuck it up. Absolutely. Because they've already passed your physical threshold if you're inviting them to drinks, I imagine. You're not doing this to randoms, right? And they probably passed some. Mm -hmm. You're not asking like a random guy out to drinks. It's probably a guy where you're like, I could fuck this guy, but let's meet him and see like what's up, you know? Yeah, I guess it's like like you you want to like test to see if they fuck up. Exactly. It's like I it's like you're desperate for them to not fuck up. I want to help them not fuck up. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Drinks okay, wait, sex. I and I never fuck cult. up, so obviously if they ask me for drinks, it's, it's over at that point, you know. I don't know. It's like the ick. The ick is uh wily. Yeah, well, uh, referring to a boner. Okay, so the poll is, if a girl texts a guy, are you up? And he responds, I'm up with the face that you sent me. Yep. Do you interpret this as him referring to a boner? Is yeah. that adequate phrasing? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Okay, I'm gonna put yes, absolutely as an option because that's what you keep saying. Yeah. I'm gonna say yes, absolutely, and not necessarily. Sure. Okay. Yeah, that's the least okay. favorable phrasing towards me, and it's still gonna be over fifty percent. I'm that confident. Okay. You're so. We should put. We should put manifold. I don't manifold know how to use that. I should learn how to use the website. Market. Given that I'm working with them, but. Yeah. <laughs> but do you not bet on anything? No, I have a problem betting without real money. I like betting real money. I bet a lot of real money in the last presidential election, but betting like Wait. not real money is harder for me to get invested. You know. Yeah, but the people get to see your betting and then think you're cool if you get right, because then you have points. <laughs> Can't you buy the points, though? I mean, with real money. What if somebody just... Okay, I'll... Tonight, I'll look into how to actually bet on that website. I should know, but... Okay, did, did the AI girlfriend say anything? Oh, I'm still waiting. She takes a few minutes to respond. Which I guess is yeah, similar to I you think... in real life, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it does depend a bit on, like, how crowded the pipes are. Yeah, because there might be a lot of people texting or not. What is the ultimate goal with this at the end? I would like, so I, I, I don't think, I don't know, this identity real? Because I feel like I am simply like the pattern that replicates me. And I feel like if I can get an AI 
that sufficiently says the things I would say. One, I would be less lonely, and two, there's that's like kind of legitimately me, you know? Oh, wait, hold on. I just realized, you said if a girl texts a guy, are you up? And he responds, I'm up. Was it up? Was it are you up or is it what's up? Are you up? No, that's good. Okay, that's fine enough. I don't care. That smiley face just sells it, okay? You don't see a smiley <laughs> face like that without knowing that guy has a ra is bricked up as fuck in a <laughs> raging erection. Me that. You don't think what? Uh, I don't think I've ever seen how a guy send me that. Well, maybe you're not bricking guys up in the morning enough. If you introed yourself yeah. like this robot does, okay? Ayla AI, okay? Gives me a nice picture to wake up to and shit. I would be bricked up for this. But your normal <laughs> messages are just like some random autistic shit. It's not breaking me up that much, you know? Maybe that's your fault. Oh my God, the votes are not going. I think I think the votes right now are influenced by your chat. They so are. I Absolutely. think we need to wait a little bit more. Absolutely, we do, don't worry. I think they're trying to make sure you win. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see how it goes. I'll retweet it, okay? To my unbiased. Twitter no! That's fine. <laughs> Most of them hate me anyway. You're good. Don't worry. Do what percentage of the people who watch you hate you? Probably not much. Probably like 10% or less. I stream a lot. It's really hard. There are probably more haters who watch my YouTube videos. It's really hard. Why would you watch my stream if you hate me? That's like so much of my, so much of me occupying yeah. your brain space. Yeah. I was thinking that maybe I should stream more because I think people, it's harder for people to hate you when they see you live versus when they see your tweets. Probably, yeah. Yeah, because people make more assumptions about your character, your demeanor, your tone when they only see tweets and stuff, yeah. 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 But anyway, I feel like if 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 you can have, like, if you made a clone of you, mm -hmm. I feel like that would basically be you, right? Like, you would think, like, oh, look, there's me just external. Um, no, I don't think so. I think it's, I don't think so. I think that, um... Because, like, my go-to with this is, like, I don't think twins ever feel like their identity is threatened by their twin, right? And I think that the clone, as soon as you diverge in space and experiences and everything else, like, the microsecond that you diverge, I think you would stop thinking it's you. Yeah, I know. But, like, what, what would the world look like? Okay, this is a slightly separate question. Mm -hmm. What would the world look like if the median person was you? In every way, but <laughs> just there's way like a better bell curve. in every conceivable way. Higher IQ, better taste in games, movies, and music. No war, no famine, no hunger, no homelessness. Are you sure there'd be no war? I kind of feel like you're a little bit of a war man. What? No. Why would I be a war guy? We would talk through our you problems. Like We'd use international trade. You'd and... fight through your problems with words. Why do you with assume that? Words. No, with words, but we would fight with words. Okay. It would words. be like Putin and Biden, like going on stream to have like an epic debate to figure out who should own Ukraine and whatnot. You know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Everything will be uh, established. Why, why are you into prediction markets? Why am I or why aren't I? Yeah, if you don't if you don't use them very much. I thought you were kind of like a prediction market dude. I'm know? a betting dude because I think that people have no accountability for the retarded f***ing shit that they constantly say. And I don't like that every single alternative media person constantly criticizes the mainstream media. When the mainstream media gets like 95% of things right, and alternative media people get like 30% of things right. But whenever the mainstream media makes a mistake, you better believe they harp on it forever. But alternative media people will say retarded thing after retarded thing after wrong prediction after wrong prediction, but there's no accountability. That's why I think there should be betting, so that I can force you to pay out if you actually... And usually what actually happens, and this is actually a good thing, is usually what the betting does is they don't actually bet and lose. Usually they will actually begin to intelligently moderate their opinion hardcore. So if I take somebody and he's like, I know that Trump is gonna win, I bet he's like a 10 to one favorite. I'm like, 10 to one favorite? Okay, give me nine to one odds then on like betting on him. They'll be like, well, a lot of things could happen and maybe the indictments will change stuff. And like, you know, it's harder to be like, okay, this is a more honest opinion than the bullshit that you were selling earlier. Yeah, this is fair. No. Do you, wait, so when you, when you talk, are you aware that you're talking? Um. Like I don't know how to interpret that question. I know I'm like, talking. Like just, I'm consciously you just said yeah. words. Yeah. Very fast for like a minute and a half. Okay. I, that was and not I a minute and a half. That was like 20 seconds or 35. That was, it felt like an infinity. Okay. Because well, I was trying to. <laughs> time at night time. Okay. Uh, like, but like, do you do you feel like you are aware of the words as you're speaking them when you're speaking them? Yeah. I or think like, so. do they just like sort of like come out through something that's not your head? I feel like a lot of it is Markov chaining. Like you're taking like 
it's kind of like you're building a train track in front of you by putting kind of like these sentences together that all kind of like flow together in a predictable way. Like that thing, like flow together in a predictable way is like a chain of words. And then while I'm using that yeah. chain of words, then there's another set of words that I can think of in the meantime. Like another set of words I can think of in the meantime. There's like another train track that goes down. And, right, yeah. I think it's kind of like that. Yeah, like I kind of had a sense while you were talking that like it sounded like you like switched into this other mode where like you're like it was like the like the preset and you were like kind of like pulling out presets as you went. Yeah, I think kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's ideal. I think people think you're smart when you can do that. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's probably somewhat indicative of intelligence. I think it's more cool if you can have a genuinely novel conversation with somebody. Um, even if it is slower because you've got to actually take some time to consider like new concepts and how you want to spit them on everything but yeah yeah I think that like they indicate different types of things I'm not saying like one is bad like it seems like good I, w I, I think I do it the thing that you did sometimes but I wish I could do it more like I've done so many podcasts about like sex work stuff that at mm -hmm. some point you just ask me one of the basic questions and I can like Markov chain it out yeah without like really being present to know what I'm saying mm -hmm. um, I don't know what I'm saying now Oh yeah, but like the the good the conversations that are truly novel, I think, are really boring to watch because they're usually very slow, and you have to be quite um, precise. Yeah, I think it just depends on the people. I think the problem is that like um, a lot of people, um, a lot of people when they talk don't say anything. I actually just did a podcast in LA called the Minimalist Podcast, and there was a guy called TK Coleman next to me, and they wanted to talk about things related to ethics. And epistemology and as soon as they said that on this podcast i wanted to f kill myself and Why? um because usually when people talk <clears throat> okay i'll do an i'll do a demonstration okay so here's how i would say a sentence usually when people talk they just don't say anything they ramble and ramble and ramble and nothing like a value comes out okay that's one way you could say that another way you could say that is a lot of the times when people talk they don't really say much of value people will just like blurb on and on and on and nothing that they say has any real meaning it feels like a lot of people are just talking to fill up space and like nothing valuable is actually being said and people will just drone on and on and it's just the most unbelievable thing in the world to listen to somebody take up so right people do this shit where i get the gist of what they're saying in 15 seconds and they manage to stretch it out to a minute or two every single time um but the last time i had a conversation on this particular podcast i don't know why i don't know what it was this is the first podcast i've ever been on i think in my entire life where we were talking about these concepts and it felt like every time they were speaking, they had something valuable to fill the air with. Like every sentence was necessary, the words were meaningful. I appreciated that. I feel like a lot of the times when people, especially are dealing with new stuff, they just kind of mumble random shit. And if you were to ask them like, what are you talking about? They're like, I don't know. That's annoying to me. I'm looking them up now. That's like actually quite a good sell. Well, hold, that hold on, that was my episode. I don't know if every episode is like that, okay? But they're called the minimalists in LA. But it was a fun, yeah, it was fun. Okay, yeah. okay awesome. Thank you. Yeah, I, I notice myself doing this sometimes. I'll say a thing, and then I notice I repeat the thing, mm -hmm. even though I don't need to. I think sometimes, I think it takes a lot of, like, courage to say something and then leave it hang. Because sometimes, especially if the other person is quiet, you kind of want to continue to fill the space. You can't handle there being any silence. You really don't like that air. Yeah. You're really not, yeah, like you just, you want to keep filling the, the space. It's very hard to just be quiet. I'm really curious to see you interact with rationalists. I think you're less interested in this than I am. I just want to watch this happen because like, like. Listen, I've got high expectations. There's another friend I have and she goes to like, she's a Burning Man now. She does things. She's excited for me too. Like it's either going to be really fun or it's going to be really fucking horrible. My Ella. Do listen. I know her? Is she one of the rationalists? No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Oh. Um, but the, uh, yeah. Yeah. What, this is next month? Yeah. It's either going to be super fun and I'm going to be like, oh my God, it's a bunch of like really smart and cool people. Or I'm going to go there and I'm going to be like, oh my God, the pseudo pretentiousness. And then I'm probably going to hate you. And then it's going to oh, no. bridge burning. And yeah, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, that that would be the bridge burn. The, the legendary bridge burn. <laughs> oh shit. Well, there we go. Our friendship might be on a three to four week timeline now. Exciting. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Because <laughs> I love them so much. I feel like I, like I know they're not my children because they're like way better than I am in every way. But uh I, I feel such beaming love and care for them. Wow, that's and you're a lot of pressure. You're walking into the the center. You're going into the heart. Here we go. The deep well, soul. We'll see what happens. Yeah. But. I think your texting robot is getting overwhelmed with all the people messaging her right now. I was still not. The 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 people running it messaged me and said the back end issues. So. <laughs> what is the wait? So what is the ultimate goal with this? Well, the ultimate goal is to give people an AI girlfriend, basically. Because, like, okay, I think most girlfriends suck. 
okay. and I'm like, what if I could inject deep self acceptance into an AI girlfriend? Do you and think that also, like is that healthy? Uh, the deep self acceptance. AI girlfriends. Uh, well, it depends what you mean by healthy. Like, is OnlyFans healthy? And I'm like, OnlyFans is more healthy than not OnlyFans. But it's probably less healthy than, like, having a bunch of women who are dating you all at once. You know? I feel like OnlyFans is a bit different because um, I feel like you can always... I feel like there are... Respo I feel like there are healthy... Okay. I feel like a healthy mind can engage with porn. I feel like a healthy mind would never engage with an AI girlfriend. Do you think or do you disagree? I don't think so. Like, like what what about it do you think is unhealthy? Like, be feeling lonely and like looking for somebody who's not physical to talk to? Okay, can I, can I run us on a quick journey super duper fast? Yeah. Okay. Four years ago, I did way too many fucking mushrooms and on my first ever psychedelic experience, I had like a ego death level, insane fucking bullshit, and I melted my fucking mind. And one of the things I came away from, uh, there were two big pieces of information I came around. One was that, um, or no, actually it was, it was one big piece of information, and one was that I really don't value truth anywhere near as much as I thought I did, because when I was in the deepest parts of that trip, my experience was like, holy shit, I did enough drugs, and I unlocked the actual truth of the universe, and this one sucks way more than whatever life I was living before. I really don't like this space. I'd rather be delusional and go back to the life where I thought other people were real, and blah, 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 blah. That was a feeling that I had. So I came out of that thing like, geez, maybe there are actually some deep truths of the universe that if I were to discover them, would make me miserable. I don't think I would want to know those truths. That was one thing. Second thing was, second, um, second huge mushroom trip, because me and Melina were eating things that we thought were old and they weren't old. They just took three hours to kick in. So we had another huge one. And I realized during that one, I was like, you know, one of the reasons why I'm super uncomfortable with the idea of the universe being fake is because um, I'm actually really worried that I'm the only mind and other unique minds mm -hmm. existing is actually like the most important thing to me in my life. And I think there's a value in engaging with another mind because it's like a whole other set of experiences and like the way that I engage with, the way that I can get things from that, like, is reflective of me as a person. So for instance, if I go to, um, a, we're gonna say a girl, right? We'll just use a standard, you know, what do men care about is sex. If I go to a girl and I'm able to get that girl to have sex with me, it demonstrates a lot of my own value because I've taken a unique mind that exists in another body and I've demonstrated enough value to them that they've decided to engage with me in a certain way that shows a level of trust, mm -hmm. respect, admiration, etc. Now, Engaging with other people always has that sort of implicit buy-off to where if you're engaging me in a way, then I've done something or I've signaled value or I've, I've accomplished something that is meaningful to me. But all of that is kind of removed when it comes to engaging with an AI, I feel. So that's why I'm but saying, like, saying I'm that, not sure. Yeah, so go ahead. Yeah, engage with that. Go ahead. Are you saying that, like, the problem is that an AI demonstrates too much acceptance? That it's not conditional? Maybe, yeah. But then your obvious response is going to be, couldn't you make you have to jump through more hoops, huh? Yeah, why don't you just make the AI only like you sometimes sure and then you could theoretically build those loops or hoops up to where they are basically emulating a normal person you're having to jump through hoops anyway and then what's the main yeah, i mean if they're sufficiently right? trained on me then yeah i still feel like it's also different. by the way i do yeah. think that there is only one mind oh well that's this is pretty correct lame but okay what do you mean by that like we're a universal mind or you think you're the only mind that exists i think i'm the only mind that exists okay well i'm the only mind that exists so you're wrong i am the main well, character what, you're an NPC in my, my world perception would say. i'm sure it would <laughs> my okay. perception is very tries very hard to convince me otherwise that's fine so but when talk. we turn off this call all right you no longer exist and i do so fuck you yeah well, um do you think that like are you ever planning on like charging for this type of model uh yeah well, do you think that there might it's, be it's, it, it costs money to run so mm -hmm. you have to like there's no like I would just be losing money if sure. there was no payment. What if you run into an area where you could be accepting of one thousand people, or you could be accepting of two hundred people, and the two hundred acceptance is more meaningful because there's more hoops to jump through, and the AI is a little bit more selective, but the thousand people like earns more money. Do you get into kind of a weird thing where now you're basically like prostituting self acceptance in a negative way or something? Yeah. Well, it's, a, it's like it's like a little weird, right? Because so one, there's like acceptance of all, which I think generally people consider to be really nice and positive. Mm -hmm. Like if you could have like a god beaming love and self and acceptance towards you, no matter who you are, this is what kind of what we view as an ideal. Is it? Uh, I think so. I mean, a lot of people are religious for this reason. Um, 
Fuck. Okay. I haven't explored this tunnel a lot. Intuitively, I feel like the answer to that is no. I think that when we talk about God and we talk about unconditional love, I still think that we're conditioning that on some sort of behavior on our end, such that like, um, like the fact that I'm willing to worship God and do contrition for sins and act in a certain way. I, the, here, here's like the test that I'm going to in my mind is if I walk up to a God, and I could be totally wrong by the way, I'm just trying to guess to the average person. Mind. If I walk up to a God and God comes up to me, he's like, you know what, Stephen, I love you, I accept you, you might have made some mistakes, but you do a great job, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, cool, I feel like pretty good about that. And then if I see him walk forward to like a leper, homeless, murderer, child rapist guy, and then he says the same thing, I feel like the average person would look at that and be like, well, now I feel like my acceptance is a little bit cheapened. Similar to like a guy saying that like a girl that fucks a thousand people is awesome because it means she'll fuck me. I feel like if you fucked a girl and then she fucked a thousand people, you might feel like it's cheapened because it's like, oh no, she'll fuck anybody. I'm not special. Yeah, it sounds like 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 you're describing a world where uh, love only feels real if it's like if it's possible to fail it. Yeah, conditional. Yeah. Like 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 conditional is only the only real love is conditional. I feel that way. I do feel that way. Yeah. Is it like it's not really about me if it's not dependent on my actions? Yeah, I think all love is like that. Even people that say unconditional love. Like even when people say there's an unconditional love between a mother and a son, well, it's literally yeah. conditioned on her being on the, the being mother. Yeah. yeah, Jesus, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't think like, like I don't think there is such a thing as unconditional love that mm -hmm. can be applied to only one person. Like if you're going to unconditionally love someone, you must unconditionally love everybody. Yeah. So that well, so then, so now reconcile that with what you said earlier, where people would want an unconditional love machine. Uh, but I think people do want, like, I think people are often craving the sort of this thing that says, like, I'm going to be okay no matter what. Like a lot of, uh, I think, like, sort of like this soul tearing sensation that some people have on an existential level is just like clinging to a world where they're not falling into the version of themselves that is not worthy of love. Like, I will be worthy of love if only I do, like, X, Y, Z. And, like, maybe this makes the love feel real in some way, but it also puts you in, like, a constant sense of lack of safety. Hmm. Like, and it makes you really hold on to this ego, this version of yourself. I feel like... Uh, and it makes... And, which I think is, 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 is tightens your area of mobility, because if you... You have to be careful not to move into an area of self or thought or behavior where, like, you are no longer... Like, you are now the bad thing. Isn't it? But that's probably good to some extent, right? There's probably, like... There's probably an ideal level of safety. Too much safety is probably bad, right? The easiest example I can think of is I know plenty of people who have friends that are way too validating so you'll get a girl usually but it could be a guy too you get a person who is engaged in unhealthy behaviors they've got a pattern of dumb fucking shit in relationships they're getting raped all the time and making twitter posts blah 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 and all of their friends are just constantly saying like oh my god like girl none of this is your fault like oh you're so cool like oh no way blah 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 and the reality is like bro somebody needs to slap people the hand and wake you the fuck up right there's too much safety there and too much safety means that they're not trying to make the changes or move in a way that would make them more deserving of like a conditional type of response, right? And then I agree with you also, there's probably an unhealthy amount of like, listen, uh, if you don't grow up and become a millionaire, you're a worthless fucking piece of shit and nobody should even love you. If you haven't fucked 50 girls by the time you're 35 and made a million dollars by the time you're 40, blah, blah, right? I, th I think we're confusing a little bit of subtle things here. Like there's a thing where it's like, oh, you are you you went and you walked into the road and a car hit you, but go, you go girl, you should continue walking into roads. And is this sort of like a violating causality or something it's like oh the rules don't apply to you uh and you should not change your behavior it is like the world's fault that you are being punished mm -hmm. i think this is a separate kind of concept from the thing it's like uh you are worthy of love I mean, and again we haven't really like gone into what love means here exactly but uh i think those are different how I don't... uh uh there is i think because i feel I, like I for me actually, implicitly where the concept of love almost comes like a you're doing good, don't change. That's almost what it feels like. Because love is a form of like acceptance. And if you're accepting somebody, why would they want to change it? But go ahead. Yeah, I have actually a blog post very specifically about this distinction. But I, I think it's possible that you might not have the thing. Because I, I remember like back when I first started talking to you, I was probing a lot to see like where you lay, lay along the spectrum. Uh, and I don't even think you have a concept for it. Uh, I, I could be asking correctly, incorrectly. I might be mistaken. But I think you don't have the thing in your brain that has that like understands like the deep existential sense of incorrectness uh like i ask like are you suffering like are you at peace with yourself um i think a lot of people have this subconscious like background idea that like i am not sure that i'm okay and i mean okay in a very broad sense not like oh 
I'm going to like have a house and not run into a car. I mean it in the sense. Oh, of, like, it's like that really old. There was some bullshit psychology from a long time ago called I think it's transactional analysis, but it's that default position of it's called um, you're okay, I'm not okay, basically, where the assumption is everybody's more put together than you. There's some deeply flawed or broken aspect of you, or there's something that you have to constantly work to repair, or whatever. And it's like the default state of mind. There's like four ones. It's like I'm okay, you're okay, I'm not okay, you're okay, or that, like that kind of thing, or whatever, kind of uh, yeah. along those lines. Maybe in that direction, I think maybe it's like the, the question, like, if somebody deeply knew the true you, all of you, mm -hmm. would they realize that you were bad? Okay. Like, bad. Would they be like, oh, now that I know who you are, I know that this is a bad thing that should not be. Gotcha. Like, do you have this sense about yourself? Like, Absolutely not. I'm fucking awesome. Yeah. Right. That's what I thought. That's why I don't think that you're a good person to talk to about this. That's why I'm the main anymore, character. Anymore, okay. To. Yeah. Oh, you used to. Oh, but you don't. Yeah, oh, good. Good. that's good. Well, look, you've gotten over it. Congratulations. Okay, apparently the a Ayla is supposed to be texting you now. Should I resend her my last message? I, don't, I guess so. I don't know. Oh, anyway, I'm sorry. Circling all the way back. Yeah, how would you would you be worried on an AI model where you might craft it to have more acceptance because there's a greater profit motive behind that? And then would that fuck with the people that are... Yeah, profit motive is weird because like profit motive kind of fucks with like my OnlyFans experience, right? Mm -hmm. Like in an ideal world, I get to be like legitimately my full sexual self on OnlyFans, and then people are like, "This is you know this perfectly aligns." It's kind of like what are the incentives for having sex with somebody? Like you kind of suppress your own desires to try to make the other person happy because you want to be sexually accepted by them. Okay, it's like that, but like all the fucking way down. Uh, so yeah, there's definitely some like a profit motive warping, but uh, I. Th I think I like I feel a lot of like integrity around making sure that it is not doing things I don't approve of. If that makes sense. Not doing th um Oh, so there's like a bucket of things where you've got like things you really want to do, things you're okay with, but then things that you don't want to do. And as long as you're avoiding the last bucket, you think that's okay? Yeah, like like I asked it the dog words question and then it was like it gave a very uh, polite response and I felt like a little morally offended by that I was like that's not okay I don't want to put polite answers out into the world uh, so we're, we're gonna work on it it's like still kind of a, like an early stage mm -hmm. which is going to get better over time and eventually we'll be able to answer the dog words question it'll be interesting um, but <laughs> I feel strongly about that there's also things like um, like ethics like in the cam girl world for example it's really common for guys or not really common but occasionally it was well known you would get a guy who looks like he's kind of giving you his life savings mm -hmm. and then at that point that's you're i never felt comfortable with that you'd, you'd say like hey you need to we're going to block you we're going to take a break forceful break mm -hmm. um yeah but, so it, I, think but I think there's a lot the of people line. that probably take advantage of those guys right uh yeah i think so. i you know actually I'm not, i mean, i believe that theory but like actually all of the girls that i knew would talk about this and seemed to block them so maybe i was just in a good group mm -hmm. i don't know hmm. but i'm not saying it doesn't happen because obviously like anybody can be predatory sure but also at some point i'm like a little i get confused over what predatory means when you have like at some point in order to say oh i'm going to cut you off it's like you're removing the agency from the person you're like i'm not trusting you to be able to make good decisions for yourself anymore and i'm going to decide to be the person in control and like i always feel a little bit weird about that yeah that's a really difficult one because arguably like some People argue anytime you're sending money to a random girl online, it's mentally unwell. But then other people are like, if you make a f of money and you want to send, you know, a few thousand dollars a month to some girl that you enjoy talking to, right? Is that more exploitative than, um, than you know, like than a stripper who does the same, you know? Like there's a lot of strippers that talk Wait, to clients. Wait, who's, who's the exploitative one? The, um, the sex worker. Oh, I see. Like if a guy is sending you like two or three thousand a month, is that that seems like extreme? But if the guy makes a fuck ton of money and he's decided to spend his money that way, yeah. and he's like an adult, like is that exploitation? Um, I don't know. I think that's a really hard one to yeah you know, to sort through. Have you know. ever tried tipping a cam girl? No. I I recommend it. I'm not saying you have to go become a cam girl tipper, but I went through this process. I was like, okay, yeah. I'm a cam girl. I want people to tip me. I should go through the process of like pretending to be a man and tipping a girl and see what it's like. And it was quite surprising for me. Actually, like I even despite being on the other side and seeing this happen constantly, the actual like subjective process of going through it was fascinating. I recommend it because uh, I didn't understand how fun it was. Does okay. that make sense? Yeah, I guess maybe. I feel like, like, like oh, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, the sensation of uh, like picking a girl 
and then finding I noticed that my my decision process was like trying to find one I thought that I could make the happiest mm-hmm. that was really what I was going for so I'd find one that was like kind of uh wasn't making that much money for maybe it was kind of alone so I went it was like 50 bucks I'm like I'm just gonna dump 50 bucks on her and then I went and I was like okay I'm gonna do it I was like hi I like the flirted a little bit and then finally I was like boom you know like she probably made way less than that per hour so it should have been very exciting and then the fucking bitch just like was like thanks and like barely even acknowledged me and Damn. I was devastated how much money did you like, donate? This is horrible. It was only fifty dollars, but at the time, this is a long time ago. For, fifty dollars, so kind of and she didn't money. even respond that much. Damn. Yeah, it was it was a low down girl. She was probably making like maybe twenty bucks an hour, uh, based on f- her king. Wow. And I was so I was like, this is terrible. But anyway, but the sensation of like giving her the money was really pleasurable and anticipating like a joyful response, um, in a way that I did not understand how powerful that was. So I recommend at least going through the process just to psychologically see. Yeah. I feel like there can be fun fetishes around paying people for sex, but I feel like the ordinary process of doing it like fill my head a lot because I don't know if the person is actually into it or if they're just like happy to get the money. So it's kind of a weird. I think I think we might be able to fix this incentive if you pre-commit. Like I would have clients who would pay me for sex and then I would be like, well, I can't be totally honest if they're making me feel bad because if I am honest, like this one time, wait, I don't remember which stories I've told you, but this one time uh, I've, I, this guy and he had like a pretty big but like likes to go in dry did i tell you the story no nope, i think i would have remembered this but go ahead and he likes to go in dry and so like going into seeing him again i was like i'm gonna gotta prepare because this guy is not i mean he was a lovely guy i really liked him but so i went in and i put the suppository thing that's like hyaluronic acid and it's supposed to like prehydrate your vagina okay you um, couldn't just use lube so I, well, no, he was not, You typically I do, but he was not the kind of guy to like, where it was easy to use loop. I don't know. He would just like get very into it. And I would always feel like it was really awkward to break the flow. But with a lot of guys, oh, it's I like understand easier. Saying. Sure, sure. Okay, okay. But it was just the kind of guy where I'm like, and I hadn't used this before. I was like, this might be the right time to try it because it's, it would be like, he just doesn't make it easy. So I put in the suppository I went and then we started having sex and like the suppository were great. But then I looked down and then it's just like white froth everywhere just like intense like white like it looked like i had a horrible yeast infection like cottage cheese spilling everywhere and i did it was it was a suppository but i was like oh no this guy is going to look down and then see that what he looks like a horrific uh so i kept like trying to like wipe it up as we were going and then afterwards we finished and he was like okay we should go take a shower and i was just inside i was like fuck and then we go shower and he spends so long in the shower he just like keeps like washing me down and i'm like okay i have to bring up the fact that he just watched this horrible cottage cheese spilling out of me and so eventually i was like okay so i beforehand i did put a thing in just to experiment and that was what was causing the thing the the white discharge and he was like you weren't coming (laughs) i was like what and he's like i thought you were orgasming that whole time and that was orgasm juice and i was like oh um, I'm pretty sure like 50% uh, of guys think that women pee out of their vaginas. So that's actually not surprising at all to me. It yeah. was really bad. And it, it was especially bad because I was absolutely nowhere near coming. Like sometimes guys like go to the extent where I can tell they kind of want me to come. And then like, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, but like this, it was like, I wasn't even pretending. Like I was just, I was, ride, I was like, yeah. there's no way this sure. guy can think that I had an orgasm, not even, even a little close. Um, and so uh, that's just why I was very shocked that he thought. So I was like, no. And I tried to salvage it. I'm like, oh, well, I mean, he felt really good and stuff. Um, but then afterwards, he never saw me again. Damn. So my the lesson here is like, if you're honest, if you're honest with men, they punish you. That's the problem. And so I would love to figure out some sort of incentive design where you can have like an escort and a client, but like uh, the incentivize is honesty so that you can like learn to actually have good sex with each other because like I don't think it's like long term good to for a client to be having an escort that's like dishonest with them. So I think maybe that same... if you paid for a package. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say I think that same problem actually exists in relationships too. I think it's an issue with men mm-hmm. and women. Um like for instance like giving any kind of feedback during sex can is like one of the biggest turn off shutdowns for so many people like if, you, if somebody's giving you head and you try to give them any amount of guidance they're just they could completely shut down some people are really good and communicative and are receptive to it but in my opinion that's like the rare like if a girl's giving me a blowjob and she's like not very good i'm not even gonna waste my time i'll probably moan and say like, oh let's fuck whatever because like i'm not about to say some shit where it's like maybe you could try this and then i can tell like i've destroyed her self-esteem and it's like me like why don't i even say anything? 
retarded. Um, and I think for women, I think it's the same thing with men too, where if you give them any type of feedback, the guy will kind of like just shut down and turn into a f-ing baby and then give up and then go to the next thing. People, there's so much yeah. ego, stupid shit into like sexual stuff. But I, like that happens even in relationships. So I can imagine with any other type of thing. Yeah. This, this reminds me of the difference between like wanting a thing and trying to get a thing. I was having a conversation with a partner some months ago. We were in a do community and I was like, I think that these people really want to like think well and like be smart. And he said, yeah, I, I'm not saying they don't want to. I'm saying they're not trying to. And I think like a lot of people like want to be good at sex, but like there's somehow this is just associated from the trying to be good at sex. Yeah, they just like, want to were... be the top. It's kind of like saying like, I really want to be in shape, but I never want to go to the gym or work out. It's like, okay, yeah, really make any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Like actually trying to is like quite uncomfortable. Like you have to go through the process of like learning like, oh, I wasn't making that girl come. Like, oh, uh, that head that I was giving was actually like way too like hard and intense. Mm-hmm. I have had multiple men ask me to use less teeth, which is not good. Way to go. Yeah. Not good. Huge boner yeah, I'm killer. Yeah, very bad at it. I have a tiny mouth and gigantic trumpers. <laughs> But yeah, so I'm saying maybe if you did a thing where you like pay for a package, like I'm going to guarantee see you for five times, then I'm not going to see you after that. Uh-huh. That way, that I think that I would feel a lot safer giving feedback in something like that because like um, I know if I give feedback, I'm not going to like lose money. Uh-huh. You know. I think um, it would be so. It would never happen for a variety of reasons, but it would be so amazing if there was a way to do that on like Tinder or Bumble or whatever, where you could give date feedback, like honest date feedbacks. But it's always so scary because of the punishment that lies beyond um, if you give somebody negative feedback. But I think there are a lot of guys, because I understand, I have a hair in my mouth. Um, I understand if you're a girl, why it's more tempting to just ghost a guy. Even as a guy, it's tempting to ghost a girl. Because typically if you give negative feedback, it's just an invitation to argue. And it's like, I'm not going to waste my time arguing with a person. I'd rather just ghost him. Or for a girl, you might pick up a stalker or a hater, which could be even worse. Um, But it would be so, I think it would be so healthy for people if you could honestly get like a date evaluation, or if you could honestly get some sort of feedback on why a particular interaction didn't work. But people are so shy and it can go so wrong. I can understand why nobody ever does it. Yeah.